Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture on political economy, approach to globalization. This lecture is part of your paper on media and globalization. In this lecture, we will learn about the theories of political economy and their origins, the key tenets of political economy, how political economy relates to communication about information society and the commodification of information and lastly about how alternative and new media are shifting the traditional boundaries of political economy of the media. How did economics and politics come to get intertwined in the study of media? What are the key concepts widely discussed in relation to political economy of media? How did political economy evolve as an academic discipline and a topic of critical inquiry over the centuries? In this lecture, we will learn about how politics and economics, two of the most potent driving forces in the society, relate to media and communication in today's age of globalization. This lecture will also help us understand broadly how disruptive forces led primarily by technology development are able to challenge traditional power relations in society created by concentration of means of production and distribution in a few hands. Political Economy, Emergence and Theoretical Perspectives The concept of political economy was first discussed by classical economists of the 17th and 18th centuries such as James Stewart, David Hume, Francois Cusne, David Ricardo, Adam Smith, and others who undertook to systematically study political economy as academic discipline. In simple terms, political economy refers to the interaction between politics and economics. James Mill in Elements of Political Economy 1824 lucidly explains the science of political economy as compromising of two grand inquiries, that of production and that of consumption. While detailing the fact that production must be followed by consumption interspersed with the activities of distribution and exchange, he further identifies the specific four inquiries that comprehended the science of political economy. These, he points, are the laws which regulate the production of commodities, their distribution, laws according to which these commodities are exchanged, and finally, laws that regulate the consumptions of these commodities. A key component of classical political economic thought was contradictorily focused on economics and politics being separate entities altogether. According to classical political economists, the economy was not or did not need to be political. Caporesso and Levine then point to the fact that such a perspective meant that the rise of capitalism would depolitize the economy. They also deduce that this view of classical theorists led the term political economy to be displaced by the term economics. Following the skepticism accompanying the classical perspective of political economy, Karl Marx advanced arguments to link political agendas to economic forces, even though he did not diverge substantially from the classical idea of economics as an entity separate from politics. Marx fundamentally postulated that differences in social class are a casual factor of political conflict, that the elimination of the marketplace and of division between social class will automatically cause political conflicts to disappear. Between these two contrasting perspectives was one of the economic nationalism forwarded by Friedrich List in his seminal work, National System of Political Economy, 1844. In this approach, List refuted classical liberalism or the classical economist stands by stating that individuals were not mere producers and consumers but were citizens or states or members of nations. Therefore, the goal of economic policy could not be limited to wealth maximization but must also include the development of the nation's culture and power. To summarize, Gilpin postulates that the differences in opinion among early and contemporary scholars about the interaction between politics and economics can be classified into three distinct and different ideologies of political economy. The first from the stables of economists such as Smith and Ricardo was liberalist. This stance emerged from orthodox economics and as a reaction of materialism separating economics from politics as distinct spheres and argue that markets in the interest of efficiency, growth and consumer choice should be free from political interference. 
इकोनॉमिक नेशनलिज्म और मसडलिज्म द सेकेंड डिस्टिंग आइडियोलॉजी गवर्निंग स्कॉलरशिप ऑन पॉलिटिकल इकोनॉमी एडवोकेटेड दैट पॉलिटिक्स शुड बी हेल्ड एट अ हायर लेवल देन इकोनॉमिक्स दैट द मार्केट शुड बी टेक अ प्लेस सबॉर्डिनेट टू स्टेट बिल्डिंग विथ पॉलिटिक्स एज इंपॉर्टेंट डिटर्मिनेंट्स ऑफ इकोनॉमिक रिलेशन द लास्ट द मार्क्सिस लाइन ऑफ थॉट पॉसिटेड दैट क्लास स्ट्रगल ड्रिवन बाय इन इक्वालिटीज इन द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ वेल्थ लेड टू पॉलिटिकल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट दैट इकोनॉमिक्स इज द की ड्राइवर ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स एंड दैट विथ इक्वलाइजेशन ऑफ क्लासेस इन सोसाइटी एंड डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ द मार्केट प्लेस ऑल पॉलिटिकल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विद सीज टू एग्जिस्ट मॉडर्न पॉलिटिकल इकोनॉमी और पॉलिटिकल इकोनॉमी एज वी नो इट टूडे डिराइव इट पॉस्टलेट फ्रॉम ऑल थ्री आइडियोलॉजिकल प्रस्पेक्टिव एंड फॉर्म्स इट्स ओन डेफिनेशन विच फ्रीड एंड सक्सेंटली स्टेट इज सिंपली अ सिस्टम ऑफ रैशनल सेल्फ इंटरेस्टेड एक्टर्स कंबाइनिंग विद इन और आउटसाइड इंस्टीट्यूशन सेटिंग्स टू अफेक्ट सोशल आउटकम्स ही फर्दर इंफोसिस that individuals in the modern setting can be assumed to act rationally to maximize their utility within constraints modern political economy provides a broader framework from understanding complex international and national issues and events and comprises several areas of study politics of economic relation domestic political and economic issues the comparative study of political and economic system and international political economy the emergence of international political economy the author state mark the return of political economy to its roots as a holistic study of individual states markets and the society political economy of the media development following the brief introduction of the theoretical development of political economy over the past few centuries let us now move on to the study of political economy of the media the emergence of the mass media in the 20th century catapulted the study of the political economy of the media communication as a subject did not classically invite a political approach for its study and communication researchers and scholars in the early to mid 20th century were mostly focused on studying media effects on audiences the economics of the media were not a focus area of communication scholars of the time and they paid little attention to the economic context of production distribution and consumption of media Boyd Barrett 1995 writes that the term political economy as associated with the media is primarily critical in nature earlier scholarship emerging out of frankfurt school of critical theorist and the works of harold ines empire and communications 1972 and marshall mcluhan understanding media the extension of men 1964 who observed and critiqued the standardization effects of commodification of culture and the emergence of mass media and had located media within broader social and historical context thus setting the direction of critical analysis of cultural industries but this tradition of critical analysis of mass media was slowly diluted in the following years by empiricists who insisted on experimental approaches to social science research in the late 1960s however radical thinkers who questioned the focus of these scholars on empirical approaches to the study of social science and the influence of radical economics reinstated the concept of political economy in the media studies herbert shellers 1969 work mass communication and american empire for example recalls boyd barrett reinforced the radicalization potential of political economy in this case applied to international communication at a time when much of the work in this particular field was addressed to the modernizing potential of the media in the third world countries with little or no reference to the question of media ownership control nor even to content and still less to broader issues of dominance and dependency state aid superpower conflict and media commercialization graham or doc peter golding nicholas graham and armand matlert in the 1970s particularly emphasized the industrial and commercial nature of mass media the tradition continues to this day while neoclassical economics prevails in the current landscape media studies today draw primarily upon the radical critical approach inherent to marxian political economy political economy of the media therefore has vasco state 
is fundamentally interested in studying communication and media as commodities produced by capitalist industries. Media and culture studies and the political economic dimensions. Scholars argue that there is an inevitable link between media and culture. Starting from the 1980s, Tracy's calendar 2015, the study of culture, society and political have used various approaches of culture studies. The Center of Contemporary Culture Studies at the University of Birmingham is credited with developing various critical methods for analyzing, interpretation and criticism of culture artifacts falling in the 1960s and 1970s. The interaction of representations and ideologies of class, ethnicity, gender, nationality and race in culture texts including media culture was focused upon by Birmingham School. The first studies of media effects and the effects of popular culture forms on audiences were conducted by Birmingham School. The interpretation of media texts by the audiences, the different ways in which audience consume media texts and use them in their lives were also studied by Birmingham School. But what was missed by Birmingham Group was a crucial third dimension, the analysis of the production and political economy of culture. Kalanar reminds us that there is an intrinsic critical and political dimension to the project of culture studies that distinguish it from objectivist and a political academy approaches to the study of culture and society. Therefore, he suggests it becomes imperative to study the culture text as embedded in a system of production and distribution that form the key elements of political economy. This stance is corroborated by critical political economics of the media. Chomsky and Herman 2002, Moscow 2009, Herman and Mackenzie 1997. Political economics notes Vasco 2005, analyze power relations, class system and other structural inequalities by investigating ownership and control. Gaham built upon Murdoch and Golding's 1974, conception of political economy within the broader framework of critical and Marxist theory with links to Frankfurt School and postulated that the analysis of the political economy of the media involves investigating the modes of culture production and consumption developed within capitalist societies. According to him, the media are primarily economic entities. They play an economic role by creating surplus value of producing commodities and an indirect one via advertising in the creation of surplus value within other sectors of commodity production. Finally, political economics, as Golding and Murdoch explained, go beyond technical issues of efficiency to engage with basic moral questions of justice, equity and public good. 2000. Political economy of the media in the information age. Political economy as it applies to the media has historically found itself divided into two distinct approaches of study. The socialist democratic tradition of Europe that saw broadcasting dominated by state funded public service broadcasters such as the British Broadcasting Corporation following the Marxist approach and the other contrasting completely commercial American media that drove studies in political economy of media towards the economics of media ownership. In the recent years, however, globally, the role of public service media has gradually lessened. Commercial media provides much of the content. Therefore, in today's era of globalization, a lot of scholarship regarding the political economy of the media has focused on the commodification of information and media artifacts, which are produced and distributed for profit by commercial organizations in the capitalistic setup. Vasco reiterates that communication and information has crucial components of the marketization process have also developed as significant industries. In many countries, public media institutions have been privatized along with other public institutions, opening additional markets for growing transnational media and entertainment conglomerates. While the internet and new media distribute culture to a far wider global audience today, a phenomenon not witnessed earlier in the history of mass media. Media, conglomerates and institutions such as the state continue to act as hegemonic forces in the production and distribution of culture. This is however not to suggest that the power of audiences themselves as producers of media 
content may be completely overlooked. In the age of new media and social networking, it is also possible for consumers to become producers of their own media content and form including oppositional voices and resistances. In summary, though the commercialization process including the development of internet itself as commercial space in tandem with the growth of advertising and public relations has propelled a consumer culture that Vasco 2005 termed as culture capitalism which accurately describes the current media landscape. Key component of the political economy of the media, the business of media. An analysis of the business of media, both traditional and convergent, encompasses some prominent concepts. Incumbent to mention that while traditional media comprises of newspaper, magazines, television, radio, music, film, video that do not use digital platforms, convergence however does not lend itself to an explanation with much ease. While broadly convergence is looked at as the ongoing restructuring of media companies as well as to describe the latest developments in media forms, distribution and consumptions, there is no universally accepted definition of the concept. By convergence, Jenkins 2006 denotes the flow of media content across diverse platforms the nexus between different media industries and the exercise of choice by audience in accessing any media that caters to their immediate needs. He further elucidates that media convergence is not merely a technological process that brings multiple media functions within the same devices. Convergence represents a culture shift with consumers motivated to explore new information and make connections among dispersed media content. Certain key concepts will be touched upon here to direct the viewer towards a holistic analysis of the subject. Commodification, commercialization of media resource. Content and products created by the mass media are typically assigned monetary and economic value in the process termed as commodification. The modes of commercialization or commodification vary according to the technology and the institutional frameworks within which the symbolic media forms are deployed. These products and services are then sold to consumers and buyers for profit. Example of commodification include producing multiple copies of printed media artifacts such as books, selling advertising space in the newspaper and magazines, selling radio and television airtime to the advertisers, providing broadcast and internet services for license and subscription fees etc. Diversification is a means of expanding a business with the aim of ensuring higher growth and minimizing risk. Investments on new products or services in other geographic markets or tapping on new consumer segments are some of the ways companies may diversify their operations. It is important to note here that aside from media corporatization and ownership concentration, take for instance six multimedia corporations. Time Warner, News Corp, NBC, Buttlesman, CBS, Disney and Viacom and four internet giants with diversified media holding Google, Microsoft, Apple and Yahoo produce the most contest in the world. Globalization, digitization, the internet and culture differentiation of media have induced new forms of organization, production and distribution through which these multinational media business operate. Globalization which encompasses transition in the nature and location of the key components of the political economy, production, consumption and distribution of product, services, information and wealth from domestic and local system to highly integrated global system along with diversification are together solidifying the formation of global network of interlocked media businesses, the backbone of which is found by a select number of multinational media of conglomerates. Further, various business owned by these media conglomerates have the scope to synergize as to minimize risk and maximize profits. Horizontal, vertical integration of media enterprises. Deregulation and digitalization have been primarily instrumental in enabled media companies to add related media businesses in the process called vertical integration. Vertical integration has advantages such as lower transactions costs, supply assurance of critical materials, improved coordination of production and inventory schedule between stages 
greater scope of innovations given possible participation in relevant production and distribution activities which are rife with possibilities of change. Thus further facilitating adequate coordination of marketing and technical and finally higher entry barriers because more financial and managerial resources are required to enter a vertically integrated company or compete with it. Horizontal integration occurs when enterprises add more companies that operate in similar lines of businesses to their portfolio. Fourth, concentration. Media concentration is defined as an increase in the presence of one or a few media companies in any market caused by merges and acquisitions and the absence of competition. Concentrated ownership of mass media or the domination of global markets by a few companies, transnational media conglomerates of TMNC is fundamentally facilitated by deregulation, policy allowing foreign entities to enter the domestic market and the advent of new technologies that have made diversification possible. The implications of media concentration by way of risk to media diversity, loss of editorial freedom and homogenization of culture content is largely significant in media markets where the plurality of news information and entertainment has performed and largely positive roles in democratization and informed citizenships and the facilitation of culture growth. This is not to suggest that caps on foreign ownership do better in ensuring media diversity given that such regulatory ownership further reinforce concentration at a national level. All these key concepts pertaining to the political economy of the media have implications that are beyond the preview of this lecture. It is however in the interest of engaged student to explore alternative views and criticism of this phenomenon as put forth by media scholars who approach political economy of this media primarily with two contrasting perspectives, that of media as an instrument of public welfare and that of media as an economic entity. Political economy of media, the Indian contest. In view of a theoretical underpinnings of the political economy of the media discussed till now, let us move on to discuss the brief of political economy as it applies to media in media. India economic crisis as an aftermath of 1991 Gulf War and its falling bailout from the International Monetary Fund in view of its declining investor confidence in the global fiscal market pushed for a large scale structure reform program in India. Changes in the global political economy further influence India towards economic liberalization with the country realizing the urgency and the importance of modern efficient telecommunication system as vital to the success of overall reform program. This led to the opening up of telecommunication sector to private capital and multinational corporations and the loosening of government's monopolistic tight hold on the sector. Thomas explains that memo changes in the Indian media landscape brought about this deregulation, economic liberalization, globalization and privatization making documenting the political economy of media or communication in India today a challenging task. The changing nature of politics in India that has inexplicably pushed media to take sides, multiple sources of funding of media organization, the gradual lessening influence and power of Indian public service broadcaster Prasar Bharti that operates Dudarshan and All India Radio and unclear policy directives regarding vertical and horizontal integration. Consolidation and cross media ownership of media entities have further created an unclear media scape in the country. Conclusion In this lecture, we looked at media ownership and control with a critical lens. Since the development of concept of the political economy of media primarily finds its roots in Western economies. Most of the theories and concepts discussed here refer to Western scholarship. However, a part of the lecture address the political economy of media in India in order to situate the theoretical underpinnings as they relate to the home economy. By the end of the lecture, we understood the dimensions of present culture economy, how media works and mediated communications flow in today's society given their prevalent relationships with wealth, ownership, power and regulation. Scholarship on political economy of media has that of other industries and sector has essentially been looked at two primary perspectives with focus on state intervention and policy instruments 
as the determinant of the political economy or with a commercial lens that places economic and market forces at the helm of discussions on the political economy. Economic perspective include classical political economy and Marxist economic theories and neoclassical economies while state influence ideally with an agenda of public welfare to ensure an uncorrupted market relies on the theories of neoliberalism. In brief writes Chang, the neoliberal discourse on the role of the state and indeed the welfare economics discourse that it dethroned is about whether state intervention can improve upon the workings of the free market. Ultimately, debates and criticism surrounds both the theorizations of political economy within the development of topic scholarship pertaining to media and communication still in the nascent stage, particularly in India. Deeper and wider review of these theoretical underpinnings, especially in the era of media globalization, convergence and consequent significant changes in the media landscape will illuminate some of the undeserved area in media economics. Thank you.